Hey guys, it's Walter from Zelcore Flux Dev Team and as promised today I am going to show you how do you host a Nimbus node on a Raspberry Pi 4B 8GB version. So for start uh, what do you need? Uh, the Raspberry Pi 4B in my case I already have bought and as, as I have mentioned on the latest video for the Cumulus I have bought two, uh, two cases that are uh, all the cases are uh, passive at sync uh, and I have stick with this one because this is probably the best one I have found I will show you uh, on Amazon where you can buy it what is the version and model name I'm really really happy with it I it's the total case gets a little bit warm when it's running but the temperatures of the processor and everything it's really low so it's a great passive uh, case for the Raspberry Pi 4B so don't forget it's, you need the 8 GB version okay what else do you need uh, if you plan to host uh, a Flux Node Nimbus you need to buy the official power adapter for Raspberry, for Raspberry Pi 4B uh, remember as I mentioned on the latest video uh, the new or the latest Raspberry Pi has a different uh, type uh, adapter is a type C adapter for the getting the power so if you have if you had a previous model and you buy the the latest one you will need to buy a new power adapter or it won't work at all okay what else do you need uh, as mentioned on the latest video uh, you need a make micro HDMI to HDMI converter because the two output ports from the Raspberry Pi 4B are micro HDMI okay so and uh, you will need uh, Ethernet cable to connect Raspberry Pi for the to the to the router to get internet connection. And what else do you need? Uh, you will need uh, a micro HDMI card. I will be using exactly the same that I was using for running a Cumulus. But if you haven't bought uh, a specific run for running a Cumulus. For running a Cumulus you will need a 64 gigabyte micro SD card. For running an, an Imbos you will also need a micro SD card but in this case you just need to buy uh, a regular uh, 16, 16 gigabyte version, okay? Uh, I will explain later why uh, but you will need the micro SD card that comes with the SD card adapter and if you don't have a laptop or something to read the mic uh, SD cards you also need to buy a, a USB to, um, to SD card adapter okay so what else do you need something that uh, was not mentioned on the previous uh, video. So what is different? What is the difference? I already mentioned one. It's the micro SD card. You can you can get a a lower gigabyte version, and also doesn't need to be a, a, from a known brand. Uh, you don't need to care with with it. Uh, what is the things that you also need? Okay, first of all, you will need a SSD uh, storage device okay uh, in this case I have bought a 240 gigabyte SSD card just for run the Nimbus okay it was bought just for that and uh, I would like to mention that I'm not uh, me or the team going to be responsible if uh, you try it on and it doesn't uh, bench as a Nimbus because uh, 
uh, it will depend on your SSD card that you buy but also really important uh, it's what I'm going to tell you again that you need to buy that makes uh, a big difference that's uh, basically uh, a SSD case okay this is a USB 2.5 inches uh, HDD case that you can connect uh, in this case uh, a SSD storage device on um, I had bought previously probably already one year ago this case from uh, AliExpress it's a USB type C and in this uh, in they refer it was uh, I don't I don't rem even remember if it was USB 3.1 uh, USB 3.0 version but this is something that you need to take uh, a good good care good try to buy a good case in this my in my case you will see that the bench will work as a, a Nimbus but as I have read on the on several Raspberry Pi forums, uh, different uh, USB cases uh, give different, really different uh, s speeds. Okay, so uh, I'm not even going to tell you what is the version that I have bought because I don't even remember. So dig a bit when you, before you buy the USB uh, case because uh, it can make uh, a big difference on the speeds that you will get on, on the Raspberry Pi and remember to to be uh, a nimble the bench score needs to be bigger than 160 uh, gigabytes or uh, sorry megabytes of write speed uh, let me just uh, mention something else that is really important that you also need to buy. Okay, as I was uh, digging uh, to to make my Raspberry Pi to host as a uh, an Nimbus, I find I find out that something else it's also important, and if you don't buy it, probably. Uh, your SSD card connected to the USB uh, 3.0 port of the Raspberry Pi it will not uh, give you the speed uh, that is required so something else that I also have bought is a USB uh, hub that is powered okay that's the, the biggest difference I uh, I read about it and I didn't want the power to, to my SSD card was given by the official adapter that is responsible to give power to the Raspberry Pi. I have, I have tested, I can tell you, there was a little bit of difference of having just the uh, USB connected um, directly to the Raspberry Pi 4B without using the hub that is uh, powered uh, it was the benches were a little bit lower uh, instead of using with this version okay so uh, you need uh, I suggest you I really suggest you to buy a, U a USB hub 3.0 you don't need to buy a higher version or if you want you can because they will be also compatible with the previous versions but the USB 3.0 is enough because the Raspberry Pi also only have two ports USB 3.0 so uh, there is no need to buy a higher version because that's the most that, that you will get from the Raspberry Pi it's only the USB 3.0 speed okay so uh, I think I mentioned everything that you are going to need it uh, for running a Nimbus uh, something also that I need to mention on this case this specific case 
uh, you will need to get, I don't know what is the English word for this, I don't know, so I don't know if you can see it properly, but the SD card gets a little bit hard to remove without a clip or something like this, okay? So after you insert it, if you need to remove it uh, with your hands, it will be extremely difficult, okay? So uh, for now, I believe uh, I already have mentioned everything that you are going to need and let's move to the part where I show you what do you need to do, what is going to be different from the uh, Cumulus Nolan Raspberry Pi 4B, okay? Hello again. Uh, this time I wanted to make a different type of video. Instead of being rec recording with my uh, mobile, I'm just doing a screen record. Uh, and I hope you guys prefer this version. This is going to be a short video because there are not uh, so much big difference between uh, how to... Uh, prepare your Raspberry Pi 4B to host for a Cumulus and for a Nibos. Um, so, as uh, mentioned earlier and as promised, I want to show you what is the Raspberry Pi 4 case that I am using. Is this one from Geekworm? Uh, I am uh, using a black version. This one is a dark gray. As you can see, great reviews. And I am also really, really happy with the case. Other thing that I want to mention that so that you don't forget, you need to buy a USB uh, 3.0, 3.1, whatever, but needs to be at least 3.0 and needs to be uh, with the power adapter. Okay, so you don't you you need to have the power adapter as mentioned before because we don't want to use the power that comes from the official raspberry power, power adapter to give energy to the raspberry pi uh two things that i also want to show is regarding the uh, external hard drive enclosure uh, 2.5 inches uh one of the words that I found several times on the Raspberry Pi forums and it's what makes a big boost and difference is you need to uh, buy uh, a case, uh, let's call it a case, uh, hard drive enclosed that uh, has support for this protocol, UASP. This is what will give uh, a boost, uh, really nice speed, uh, special if in like for this case we are using with uh, SSD storage. Uh, again, uh, I and we, the team, we will not be responsible if you buy this version or this version or a SSD uh, storage device and you try it at home and the benchmarks fails and it's it's not giving the the speed that is required to host an EBOS, okay uh this is something that you need to uh, dig and try for yourself i am just giving you the some details that I have found and I found important and in my case it worked. So this is just a guide reference, okay? So remember, uh, our driving closer USB 3.0 doesn't need to be 3.1 because uh, Raspberry Pi doesn't support it. It only needs to have this 3.0 port and try to buy one with UASP uh, support. Also, really important, to SSD storage. Don't forget, it needs to have 240 gigabytes of storage or it will not have the storage required for uh, Nimbus. Also really important is 
uh, when you are buying, uh, you saw on the video what was the brand version that I am using, but there are so many good versions. What I'm telling is don't go to the cheapest version, see the reviews, see what is the right speed that that version you will get or can get. Or if you go for a cheapest version in the, in, on the bench, it only scores uh, 100 megabytes, it will fail the benchmark for the Nimbus, okay? So pay attention to that. Um, I think this is the part that I want to show you from the hardware perspective and what are the things that you need to buy that are not mentioned on the, the guide. The guide only mentioned things from that are needed for the Cumulus, okay? So let's jump on the medium guide uh, where we have on our uh, official medium, Flux official medium. We already have a Flux node on Raspberry Pi 4B official setup guide. And as you are going to see, uh, the difference are almost none compared with the Cumulus node. So what we are going to do in the next few days when the video is launched is the medium guide is going to be a little bit different of what we are going to see here on the video because we are going to update it. Uh, currently, it just referenced the Flux Cumulus node and the requirements for the Cumulus node and we are going to update it. So first difference, as mentioned before, you don't need a 64 gigabyte micro SD card and the good one, like was required to host Anibos. You just need a 16 gigabyte SD card and can be a cheap uh, SD card. Doesn't need to be a good one because it will, it will almost not going to be used. So, uh, these are telling what are the requirements. This is going to be updated also with the requirements for the Nimbus, like the SSD, uh, 240 gigabyte storage, the USB hub, the uh, 2.5 inch uh, external uh, SSD enclosure. Uh, we are going to update the guide to to have the, that that information. So. Uh, First thing in here is saying if you have any data on your, if, if it was an existing card, uh, make a backup of it and delete all the partitions and format in NTFS. Uh, you, can, you can use Windows Mini to partition wizard uh, also to do it. And it was uh, the tool that I have used on the video guide that was made for the Cumulus. You can basically do exactly the same with the 16 uh, gigabyte micro SD card. So first part is do doing exactly the same. We are going to format and install the Ubuntu server on SD card, as is mentioned in here. And after that, we are going to boot the the Raspberry Pi connected to a monitor only with the uh, micro SD card inserted. We are not going to use yet the SSD USB storage. Okay, so you install everything like it's here in the guide for that was made for the Cumulus. It's exactly the same. I'm scrolling fast and you can check it later. Uh, it will be on the video description, the link for this medium. So this is where we uh, arrive to the important part. Raspberry Pi firmware upgrade. Yes, you need to do this part. If you don't have the latest firmware on your Raspberry Pi, uh, it probably won't work booting from external USB drive. Okay, the support for for booting 
from a USB uh, was only given uh, lately. Uh, I don't know if it was the latest firmware, but it was lately to the Raspberry Pi 4B. It didn't came with the uh, with the first firmware version. So you need to do all these steps and confirm that you already have the latest version of the firmware or if you don't have you need to update it okay so this is the important part after you updated the uh, raspberry pi firmware it says in here to do reboot to reboot the system you reboot the system and after the system is rebooted you can you can disconnect the raspberry pi from the power adapter okay so what i'm going to do uh, explain here now is it's the difference from the the cumulus on the cumulus after the reboot is telling to configure your router no we are not going to yet to configure your router you we are going to scroll up again and basically what we are going to do is go back to let the fun begin but instead of memory card what we are going to do is install the same uh, ubuntu server uh, version that we have installed on the micro sd card this time on the uh, external usb ssd storage so basically uh, you connect uh, your uh, enclosure you usb 3.0 enclosure to your computer and you go to the your to the raspberry pi imager you select again the ubuntu server version that is asked and we are using the ubuntu server 2004.2 lts but it's 64 bit version so you select exactly the same and when you press choose storage uh you select the where you have uh it, it will show up in here your external usb drive now it uh, i just have a usb a micro, uh, usb flash drive inserted that is what is going it is showing in here if it doesn't show up it's uh you need to format and create a partition on the uh, USB storage uh, device. Okay. In my case, I can tell you I received the the SSD and didn't came up with any partition set. So uh, I had to do exactly what is mentioned in here. Okay. I have created a partition, uh, format it as NTFS and after that it show up on the raspberry pi image so you install the ubuntu server on the usb storage device and after is installed now it's time to uh, connect usb up uh, to to the raspberry pi and uh, connect the USB external uh, hard drive, the SSD, to the USB hub and power up the Raspberry Pi uh, connected to the power adapter. What will happen? You will have to wait a bit because on, this time you don't need to, to follow exactly the guide like it is in here because it doesn't need to be connected again to the monitor. Why? Because you already know your IP, your local IP, that will remain the same. So you can just uh, connect to it uh, from the mobile XM, mobile XM or PuTTY. So uh, you, you will have to log in with Ubuntu user 
and despite you already have configured on the micro SD card a new password for the Ubuntu user, it will be again Ubuntu Ubuntu. Why? Because now you are starting the the system from the USB SSD storage. So it's it is it's like it's a completely new setup. So you will have to do basically what is written in here again. Uh, th this part will have to be done again because the system will be a completely new one. You will have to do again the update of the Ubuntu server because the version that it will be installed on USB storage it doesn't come came with the latest updates that you have installed on the micro SD card but now the micro SD card is just used as boot up you need to have it inserted or it won't boot up yeah I, I have lost uh, many hours trying to figure out uh, why it was not working uh, without the micro SD card and just with the USB connected directly uh, the SSD connected directly to the Raspberry Pi 4B but uh, it looks like from what I have read on several forums is that Raspberry Pi uh, uh, have given support uh, to the Raspberry Pi imagers to boot up directly from uh, USB storage but it, it was not done the same for the Ubuntu uh, images. So for the Ubuntu image, it still required to have the uh, micro SD card to your Raspberry Pi 4B, but will it will be uh, used just for the boot up startup. After that, what will be shown and what will be used by the system is the USB storage. So you do the update of the, your Ubuntu server, you set again uh, the password for the root user, and then you can skip this part because the firmware is already upgraded. So after this part, it's just continue exactly the same way as it was a Cumulus. You configure your router to work with Flux uh, and read carefully what is written in here and after you uh, install the Flux node on the Raspberry Pi 4B and that's it basically so I'm just going to show you on my Raspberry Pi 4B I'm going to connect to it with the Ubuntu user, it's already powered up and installed and running as an Nimbus. But I want to show you is that the important part, uh, the storage that is going to show up is only from the USB SSD storage. Basically, it doesn't show up what uh, the micro SD card. It doesn't use it at all. Okay, so this was just to give you this this information. When you log in, you re receive this information, and as you can see, also something important: the temperature. Uh, with the new case, it's really really nice. Uh, before I was getting. Uh, with the official case, I was almost every time at uh, 70 degrees, 70 degrees or more. Uh, with the, the one that is the official one, close up, uh, really bad. Uh, without uh, the, the case itself and with some uh, heat sinks uh, that I have bought, uh, I was getting like from... 45 degrees Celsius to 
60 uh, degrees Celsius. And with this case, completely, as you have seen, the, it's a great case. Uh, I'm get from, I believe, sometimes 35 degrees to, I don't know, 45. To, I, to most I have seen, I believe it was 50 degrees. Uh, 50 degrees Celsius. So also to mention that part. So basically you follow the same steps that are in here and also there are uh, shown on the video that I have made for the cumulus and in the end you basically you will have uh, an embos node. So I hope you have understood the the difference that are needed from the cumulus to the Nimbus node. They are so they are not so significant. What you need to understand is that first you need to install everything on the on a micro SD card uh, because the Raspberry Pi needs the micro SD card to boot uh, the Ubuntu server image and also you need it because you need to update the firmware of your Raspberry Pi. Only after that you start the uh, install process of the SSD storage and it's basically doing exactly the same thing that you have done for the micro SD card is doing again using again the same uh, tools the raspberry pi imager after that you connect everything to your raspberry pi you turn it on and it will boot from the ssd card okay uh it took more time that i was thinking to, that the video was going to, to take but i hope you have enjoyed it and you have understood what is uh, needed. To finalize, I'm going to show you my Flux running. Uh, this is the Raspberry Pi and you will see it's a Nimbus. Last benchmark, uh, it went almost 200 megabytes of disk speed. So uh, it's a little bit risky, but I already bench it uh, lots of times on using the Flux OS. Okay, not uh, if you do uh, if you run the tools uh, to check the benchmarks, you get a little lower values that you will get. Uh, by running the the bench uh, on the Flux OS, okay? So it has been passing for the last few days, the benchmark, so it's nice. It's, as you can see, it's shown as the Nimbus. And to finalize, I just want to show you uh, what are the expected rewards that you are going to get from hosting uh, a Flux Nimbus node on the Raspberry Pi 4B. So I'm opening dashboard and okay, well, we already have almost 1K nodes and I'm going to the economics. It takes a bit to load, it's normal. Okay, despite it's not showing in here yet the, the current value, but it will show up shortly. Okay, it's already showing. So basically, the current price of Flux is around uh, 14 cents US dollars. So this is a special version of the dashboard that is already showing what are the expected rewards after April 10. So after April 10, uh, a Nimbus node 
uh, it will uh, get uh, around 73 US dollars monthly. This with the current flux price and the current flux node. Uh, the cumulus node gets uh, a little bit less, around 60, 55 US dollars. It's not showing up in here. Uh, I'm not using the last row because the last row is the profitability uh, taking in account uh, the expected cost of running in a VPS that we don't have in this case. So I'm just using these values in here for reference. Okay, so also uh, something important that you need to know is uh, on the dashboard it shows that on the Nimbus node and on a Stratus node, you can run the KDA, the Cadena application, the full node chain web, and get extra rewards from it. And this case would be around uh, $16 monthly, but it's not uh, yet uh, compatible with ARM device. So you won't be able to run the Cadena uh, chain web no node on uh, a flux node on a Raspberry Pi or any other ARM64 device. Uh, there is no timeline for that. We don't know when it's going to be available. So, but I'm just giving you the information so you uh, are not expecting for uh, getting these rewards. Uh, for uh, uh, running a Nimbus on a Raspberry Pi 4B, okay? So this is everything that I want to show you uh, for this uh, video guide that was basically a step through on the already available uh, medium guide for the Raspberry Pi 4B the cumulus node it was it's not a big difference to that uh, version as you as as i have mentioned and you have saw um i hope you have enjoyed it and i hope to see uh, some feedback from you guys on the video also really important is that uh, you give us uh, comments on the video what was the USB enclosure and SS3 drive that, that you have uh, choose and if it passed the benchmark, this will help others that are willing to also host the Nimbus node on a Raspberry Pi 4B and don't have, uh, don't know for sure what they should buy and this can help others, okay? So please give comments when you uh, you already, uh, when you were already able to host the Nimbus, or for example, if you have tried something, uh, a case or a SSD storage, and it's, it's not passing the benchmarks, also put in the comments, uh, let us know what are the, the things that you are using that are working and if they are not working also put the information on, on on the video on on the comment that will help the community and others that will follow okay also something really important is uh don't forget we have a really really active discord community and if you have any doubts, uh, problems, you can go to our Discord by pressing this link on our website, cell.network, okay? You press this link and you go directly to, it, to our Discord. And in our Discord, there are two channels that you can use to ask questions and ask for support regarding notes.
it's the node support channel and the self-hosting node if you have any doubt problem related with this video or uh, related with nodes put your questions there your doubts and me or someone else from the team uh, or from the community uh, we will help you for sure and try to give you uh, the answer to so you can move on with the, the installation process if you are having problems okay okay just to show you uh, my Raspberry Pi is in here all black almost almost we can see it the USB hub and my SSD storage connected to the hub and the hub is connected to the Raspberry Pi and it's blinking because it's being used uh, it's being used from the Raspberry Pi system okay just to show you up Bye-bye.